Hello everyone, I'm Sheriff Wayne Ivey and you're watching Hit the Streets. They say that crime will rise to the level a community will tolerate. In Brevard County, we have zero tolerance for crime. These are the stories. So welcome back to another great episode of Hit the Streets, and tonight's episode is a great example of what our deputies face every day as they work to take drugs, illegal guns, and fugitives off our streets. Tonight, we start in our West Precinct, where we met for a quick briefing about the various areas that had been identified as high-intensity targets by our crime analysts, and then we hit the streets to go get it done. As usual, it didn't take very long for Deputy Kyle Shuck and Agent Sean Hannigan to get things started with a traffic stop at 1050 North Fist Boulevard, where as the vehicle came to a stop, Shuck and Hannigan observed movement inside the car that appeared to be one of the occupants climbing into the back seat. Hey, did you see that? They jumped to the back. Hey, careful, careful. Who just jumped to the back? Who just jumped to the back seat? You got switched, that's why. Who? You got switched seats. Me and her? Yeah, we just watched no, you switch. No, you said somebody jumped in the bag. No, you, the you switched because you don't have a license, right? Go ahead and step out. Girl, you ain't got to do all that. If you, if you ain't valid, we ain't going to jam you up for it. Oh, okay. It makes it a lot worse when you switch seats, right? Suspended license, that's it. Who got suspended license? You. That's why you switched. She did. No, Why'd I you switch seats? I she got suspended license. Okay, first name. Shamia. Can you spell that, Shamia? S-H-A-M-I-A. Last name? Brown, B-R-I-W-N. Why is your voice still shaking? You're still nervous. You still what? Your, your voice is still shaking. Still <laughs> no, nervous. I got a little, a little cold, but a little, <laughs> you know. <clears throat> What's your middle initial, Shamia? B. Birthday? Zero, wait, wait, zero, three, 14, 1997. You just gave me a big birthday. Top. Everybody knows their birthday right immediately. You don't no, 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 it. no, wait. What's, zero, your, what's your social security number? I don't know my social security All right, put your hands behind your back. Yeah, why? Because you give me a fake name. How do I give you a fake name? Everybody knows their social. Everybody knows their birthday. As you can see in the video, Bellamy, who first gave the deputies a false name, was originally driving the car and switched seats because she had a suspended license and was also on felony probation with restrictions that actually prohibited her from leaving her residence. Bellamy was subsequently taken into custody for driving while license suspended with knowledge and also for violation of probation. She was transported to the Brevard County Jail on a no-bond status. Our next little adventure takes us to 904 Peachtree Street in Cocoa, where Agent Matt Rush observed Theodore Hicks sitting on the side of a business selling drugs. As part of the case, Agent Rush was on surveillance and observed Hicks removing a small substance from his pants pocket and handing it to another subject as the two exchanged money for the substance. After observing the transaction, Agents Rush and Dunn approached Mr. Hicks and following a consent to search, found Hicks to be in possession of a large, clear plastic bag that he was holding in his left hand that contained several small individually packaged bags that contained a white brownish substance. Also located during the search was an additional clear plastic bag containing several small white rocks that appeared to be crack cocaine. As you might imagine, Hicks had an explanation for why he had the drugs. So yeah. you're, you're just up there handing off? Yeah, I'm just, I'm just giving her a little, little, little something to get her going. That's what I do, I just give it away. I don't, uh, do you know the little small baggies? I don't know nothing about them. 
Okay. Well, the, they were the ones that were in your hand. Yeah. Okay. Somebody just had handed me down. You, do you understand that they posit, they tested positive for fentanyl? The fentanyl? Yes. No, I didn't know nothing about that. Okay. Well, that's what I'm saying. I'm making sure for your for your knowledge is that they're testing positive for fentanyl. No. While Agent Rush is a super nice guy, I'm not sure he's buying Hicks' story as he actually watched the transaction take place. Either way, the substance from the first baggie recovered by Russian and Dunn field tested positive for fentanyl, and the second substance from the second baggie field tested positive for crack cocaine. As a result, Hicks was transported to the Brevard County Jail on a total bond of $5,000 for possession of cocaine, possession of a controlled substance, and possession of drug paraphernalia. All right, now we head over to the Cumberland Farms at 1450 West King Street in Cocoa, where Agent David Turvyville or Turbo as we call him, got a great pop on a drug trafficker who thought he was outsmarting us by throwing his cache of drugs into a nearby garbage can. What the drug dealer, Derek Jones, didn't know was that the undercover agents had been watching him the entire time as he took possession of the drugs from his vehicle after coming out of the store. The funny part is that when Jones came out of the store, we had his friend stopped in the parking lot on an unrelated matter, and Jones got scared and threw his load of drugs into the garbage can because he thought if we were watching his friend, then he was next to get stopped. Of course, our agents went dumpster diving, as we call it, and recovered the tan and color satchel that Jones tried to conceal the drugs in, and what do you know? In total, the bag contained approximately 72.2 grams of a white powdery substance that field tested positive for cocaine. Also located inside the bag were portions of broken and unbroken light yellow colored tablets that field tested positive for ecstasy. And of course, no self-respecting drug dealer would be caught without Ziploc baggies and a digital scale, so that was found inside the satchel as well. Jones, in a post-Miranda interview, confessed to possessing the drugs and throwing them in the garbage can because he got scared when he saw that his friend had been stopped by our deputies. Jones was loaded in our transport vehicle and was taken to the Brevard County Jail on a no-bond status for trafficking in cocaine and possession of a controlled substance. Next up in the How Do I Get a Free Ride to Jail contest is Brian Jackson, who was wanted on an active warrant for sexual offender failure to report temporary transient or permanent residence information. Agent Randy Truitt grabbed Jackson after he developed information on where he was located near the 800 block of North Fist Boulevard in Cocoa. Jackson, as you can see, was transported to Brevard County Jail, where he was held in accordance with the instruction of the warrant on a no-bond status. Now our next case takes place around 6,000 North US Highway 1 in Cocoa when K-9 Deputy Lauren Donaldson makes a traffic stop on a white Chevy Malibu and then observes that the back seat passenger of the vehicle, Caleb Rodell, is extremely fidgety and trying to conceal something. Rodell was asked several times to stop moving around, but apparently he didn't pass listening when he was in school, so other units responded to assist with the stop, at which time Deputy Andrew Johnson used K-9 Romeo to conduct a free air sniff of the vehicle, resulting in a positive alert for the presence of drugs. Well, as you can see from the video, Rodell had a reason to be fidgety and also to try and conceal stuff, as he was found to be in possession of a glass pipe for methamphetamine, multiple straws, and a baggie containing 1.5 grams of meth that was found during a search of his groin area by deputies at the scene. An additional baggie was located down inside Rodell's pants during a second search of his person that contained approximately 1.5 grams of a substance that field tested positive as heroin. Rodell was transported to the Brevard County Jail on a bond of $5,000 for possession of heroin, possession of meth, and possession of drug paraphernalia. So since we were having such great luck taking bad people off the streets of our West Precinct, we thought we'd move north for a little bit and see what was happening in the Titusville area. What we soon learned is that what was happening in Titusville was taking place on Garden Street as K-9 Deputy Tyler Haybart conducted a traffic stop on a U-Haul truck and starts engaging with the driver and passenger. Let me see your other hand. Okay, 12B, 1050 parking garden on a U-Haul truck. Get your tag in a minute. Hop out here for a minute. Talk to me. Oh, I was trying to help that. Both of you guys hop out here and talk to me. Yeah, I was trying to help that dude out, bro. You stand right here. You're good, bro. Just chill out. What happened, man? Hey. Give me your ID like I asked you to. Hey, go right here, but I'm just saying we were trying to help that old guy. Yeah, the old guy got yeah, stolen. Okay. We're not about that right now. We're about this traffic stop, okay? That's what we're dealing okay, with right okay, now, okay? Okay. okay well, well, why do I have to get out? Because you pulled him over. So I asked you to. The passenger of the vehicle, Tia Karastagian, had an active warrant for her arrest for failure to appear for possession of a firearm and then was also found to be in possession of drug paraphernalia and possession of cocaine. Karastagian was subsequently transported to Brevard County Jail on the no bond failure to appear warrant and the other associated charges. Now you're probably wondering what Shug and Hannigan have been up to, so let's check in on them 
as they conduct a traffic stop near W.C. Stafford Street and South De Leon Avenue in Titusville. Hey, what are you guys doing, man? We just left this house. Okay, well, you're sitting at this intersection with the lights off, and no, then you were I, backing up a little bit, so. No, I turned my car off, so his phone connected to the Oh, you're trying to get the music going. Yeah. Do you guys have your IDs? Any guns in the car, guys? No. You hesitated. No, I didn't hear what you said. After, no, no, no guns? I don't okay. No. While the occupants of the stop vehicle explained the reason for their driving actions, Deputy Shuck could smell the odor of burnt marijuana from inside the vehicle and observed that the occupants became extremely nervous when asked about having firearms inside the vehicle. Hey, Fletch, you really hesitate when I ask about a gun, so... Pistol? Yeah. I knew it. Yeah, I knew it. As a result of the traffic stop and subsequent search of the vehicle and its occupants, both subjects were found to have in their possession a firearm. Edie had his firearm tucked in his waistband, and Hammond Britt had a loaded firearm immediately under his seat. Also located during the search of the vehicle was approximately four grams of cannabis that was seized for destruction, along with both firearms in the case that were seized as evidence. Nathaniel Eady was arrested and transported to Brevard County Jail on a $2,000 bond for possession of a concealed firearm, and Darnell Hammond Brett was also arrested on a $2,000 bond for possession of a concealed firearm. Well, that's all for tonight's episode of Hit the Streets, but as you can see, it was another great night for the Hit the Streets team and another great night for the citizens of Brevard County, who can sleep safe and sound in their beds, knowing that the brave men and women of the Brevard County Sheriff's Office are out on the street working to keep them safe. Crime will rise to the level of community we'll tolerate, and in Brevard County, we don't tolerate anything. Why? Because this is Brevard County, where we are tough on crime and even tougher on criminals. See you next time on Hit the Streets.